So when we move over now to Minnesota, which is the other state that has this kind of reporting and, and restriction, we can see that they've implemented a similar kind of requirement as Maine. They've done it in a different way, though. They added it to their Maine Appropriations Bill in 2023. Instead of creating a specific law saying, hey, we're going to restrict PFAS, they simply added it as, as a line to their state budget. So this was signed by the governor in May of 2023 and requires reporting of PFAS and products sold in Minnesota effective January 1st, 2026. Notice that's one year later than the main requirement. So Maine is comes into effect in January of 2025. Minnesota hits us in, in 2026, giving us an extra year to prepare. Because this was put into a financial bill, the final actual implementing rule will be published by the uh, Minnesota Pollution Control Agency or MPCA. That's not there yet, but the actual details are actually in the legislative document. The requirements are very similar, but not identical to Maine. There are some differences, some small differences, so we'll talk about those. Um, and what this, is, this law allows the MPCA commissioner to do is enter into a data sharing agreement with another state. So will they combine with Maine so we can make one submission to cover both Maine and Minnesota? There's a strong chance that will happen, but we don't know for sure. Now, I've referenced here the Minnesota session law where this was enacted. It was enacted under the state session where they approved their budget for the year. And what it mandates is in January 1st, 2026, producers must notify Minnesota Pollution Control Agency of any product containing intentionally added PFAS sold in Minnesota. When we look at the requirements, there are requirements for the type of data submitted are identical to Maine's. The brief description of the product, the purpose of the PFAS in the product, uh, the amounts, the identification, and then the contact information of the person at the manufacturer who, who can be followed up with by the authorities if needed. So this is exactly the same as Maine, which is why it looks very strong that hopefully they'll enter into a data sharing agreement and allow us to make one submission for both. However, there are some differences between Maine and Minnesota. For example, in the current legislation, there's no packaging exemption or small company exemption listed. Will the final implementing regulation mirror Maine and apply those? We don't know for sure, but under the current legislation published in the current uh, um, state legislature, it's not. Those are not there, right? Now, there is a clause in this that allows for a main style extension. So you can actually request an extension for this requirement if you can't meet the 2026 reporting deadline. Another difference between Minnesota and Maine is that Minnesota can mandate that you provide test data. If they think you're selling a product in Minnesota and you haven't made a notification to them, they can mandate that you provide them test data to prove that there's no PFAS present. That's different from Maine, which can only require that you provide a certificate of PFAS absence. When we look at the PFAS restrictions, we can see the same kind of restrictions that we saw with Maine are coming to effect in Minnesota, where in January of 2032, basically all products prohibit uh, the use of PFAS unless the use can be deemed unavoidable by MCPA. That means that between now and 2030 for Maine or between now and 2032 uh, for Minnesota, if you have PFAS present in your products and you're reporting that to the database for them, you need to work with those state agencies if you want to continue to sell your product with PFAS after 2030 or 2032 for Maine or Minnesota. Now, there are restrictions that are hitting uh, in 2025, but again, it doesn't affect electronic equipment, although it does affect more products than are currently you know, prohibited from having PFAS under Maine. We can see things like cookware, dental floss, juvenile products, uh, ski wax, upholstered furniture. So we see a lot more products coming into scope for the prohibitions uh, that are hitting in 2025 than the prohibitions in Maine that hit in 2023, but neither one of them include electronic equipment. So really, it's the 2032 date we're concerned about for Minnesota and the 2030 date we're concerned about for Maine. Watch the full-length video and gain access to our full archive of educational webinars at greensofttech.com videos. And while you're there, learn about our premier solutions for environmental regulation compliance.